Merry Christmas and warm welcome one and all, everybody, as the Christmas season continues with the Feast of the Holy Family. We are a part of that holy, but also human family, the Church. And we stand to begin Mass with hymn number 710, O Sanctissima. everybody. Merry Christmas, Father. We continue the feast that God loves to live within us and among us. We gather as Christ's body, the church, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love and tender mercy of God the Father and all the gifts of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. The Holy Family, this feast by which Christmas is quickly followed up every year, reminds us of what Jesus embraced in being born. A similar set of relationships to our own. The realities, the joys, and the struggles and conflicts that are a part of living together in this world, in this human nature. For those times when we have hurt those whom we love the most and for those times when they stand in need of our forgiveness too we rely on divine mercy this christmas morning lord jesus eternal son of the eternal father lord have mercy Christ Jesus, firstborn child of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, long-awaited Messiah and Savior, but also dear brother to us in all things but sin, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us together to life everlasting. With the angels, we give God glory, and we use hymn number 82, the first couple of verses, to do that this morning. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply. Echo back their joyous strains.
Let us pray. One moment. Father in heaven, creator of all, you ordered the earth to bring forth life and crowned its goodness by creating the human family. And then, in history's moment, when you judged all to be ready, you sent your Son to dwell in time, obedient to the laws of life in our world. And so this Christmas morning, Almighty God, we pray, Teach us the sanctity of human love. Show us the immense value of family life and help us to live in peace with all people that we might share in your life forever through Jesus Christ who is Lord forever and ever. If you would be seated and open your minds and hearts, the word of God becomes flesh as we receive it. A reading from the book of Sirach. The father, excuse me, the Lord sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. He who honors his father atones for sins. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. He who honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, he is heard. He who reveres his father will live a long life. He obeys the Lord who brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate with him. Revile him not in the fullness of your strength. For kindness to a father will not be forgotten. It will serve as a sin offering. It will take lasting root. The word of the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Sing how to God a new song, sing how to God all you lands, sing in joy, sing out in love to our God. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Announce God's salvation for Deeds of the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Let us rejoice in our Savior who has come now to rule the earth. Rule it in justice, rule it in mercy forever.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Because you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with heartfelt mercy, with kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Over all, these virtues put on love, which binds the rest together and makes them perfect. Christ's peace must reign in your hearts, since as members of the one body, you have been called to that peace. Dedicate yourselves to thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, rich as it is, dwell in you. In wisdom made perfect, instruct and admonish one another. Sing gratefully to God from your hearts in psalms, hymns, and inspired songs. Whatever you do, whether in speech or in action, do it in the name of Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father through him. You who are wives, Be respectful to your husbands. This is your duty in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. Avoid any bitterness toward them. You children, obey your parents in everything as the acceptable way in the Lord. And fathers, do not nag your children lest they lose heart. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn son shall be consecrated to God and to offer there the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accord with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. He was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death, before he had seen the Christ. And so he came, to, he came moved by the Holy Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform for him the customary ritual of the law, Simeon took the child in his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you let your servant die in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles 
and the glory for your chosen people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said, and Simeon blessed them and spoke to Mary, his mother. Behold, this child is destined to be the rise and fall of many in Israel, a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, Mary, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was an old woman, having lived seven years with her husband after their marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple. She worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at this very time, she also gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. And when Mary and Joseph had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town, Nazareth. And the child grew in age and wisdom and grace and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. I know the initial blast of celebrating is uh, behind us, but I hope the spirit and the momentum created by the celebrations back on uh, Wednesday evening and Thursday and ever since uh, keep us going forward uh, in being glad to be together as families, to have uh, a bit of additional time to soak in that Christmas spirit, to consider the gifts we have received, not material or financial, but the spiritual and relational gifts that God has given us, and to celebrate all of that, that God's delight is to be present in human life, in human nature, in human interaction. And so a warm welcome as we continue that Christmas celebration with the Feast of the Holy Family this morning. And especially if your visitors are guests with us, if this is your first time at Lourdes, we welcome you and take you to be Christ among us. And particularly if you find yourself struggling in these Christmas days in one way or another, not everybody is able every year to be happy and psyched up and stoked for the Christmas days. If you find yourself struggling or in pain of any sort or confusion or frustration, you find yourself overwhelmed, we're especially glad that you're here this morning and hope that you might experience in word and sacrament and the life of the church power beyond human limits that comes from God for you, for your healing and strengthening and guidance. And we're especially happy this Christmas morning to welcome our parishioners, Bethany and Nick Baldwin. Uh, they come with their newborn son. I think what he'll be two months, two weeks old tomorrow, something like that. He's two and a half weeks. Uh, Noah James, he's their firstborn, and uh, we congratulate you, uh, Nick and Bethany, on this amazing thing that God has done in your love for each other as you live out the vows of your Christian marriage, a new life in your image and likeness, but also in God's. And we also congratulate you. You might be more used to seeing Nick and Bethany on the other side at 815. It's a real accomplishment to get ready for baptism at an 815 Mass. And we don't get to see them all that often, uh, the early birds around here at Lourdes. So we congratulate you both on getting up so early and getting things ready for his baptism at 815 on the Feast of the Holy Family. How cool is that? But we also congratulate you on the wisdom and the humility that brings him here for baptism, to acknowledge that while he's your son, he's also God's son, and our son, the son of the church today by this sacrament. He receives his marching orders, 
to speak and act like Jesus, not only as a little kid, but as a grown adult. And what we do here today has an impact not only on a, please God, a long and healthy and successful earthly life, 90 or 100 years with modern medicine, but also on his eternal life. So we congratulate you, Nick and Bethany. We welcome Noah James and your whole family today, and we promise to do our part as his church family to provide a setting in which he can fall in love with Jesus and follow wherever Jesus calls him. The odds are that you missed it, uh, so busy with Christmas on Wednesday evening and Thursday. The odds are that you missed it, the 100th anniversary of a truly remarkable event, December 24th and 25th, 1914. So that it wouldn't be forgotten altogether on its 100th anniversary, surprisingly, it was a grocery store chain Sainsbury's in England that did their Christmas advertising devoted to celebrating the 100th anniversary of this momentous and overwhelmingly beautiful event. It was the Christmas truce early on in World War I. The conflict had broken out in the summer, I think in early August it was, and nations in Europe were fighting against each other. Eventually, it would be 15 million people who died in that war. But a very a remarkable thing happened on Christmas Eve. All of a sudden, the shelling stopped, at least on one battlefield. All of a sudden, the shelling stopped. And English and Belgian and French soldiers, taking note of it, began to sing Silent Night from their trenches. And from trenches across the other side of no man's land that was littered with the bodies of both sides, the Germans sang back, Schiele nach, Heilige nach. And before long, there was a chorus of silent night in multiple languages raising up from the trenches of these battlefields. Things stayed quiet through the night. And at dawn, one English soldier peeking above ground line noticed how quiet it was. The birds were even back. And so he climbed out of his trenches with his hands up. At first, the Germans thought it was a trick. They were ready to mow him down when one of the German soldiers called a halt to it. And he himself climbed out of the tr trenches. They walked toward each other through barbed wire, stepping around and over the bodies of their slain comrades. They shook hands. My name is James. My name is Otto. Merry Christmas, James. And all of a sudden, at least on this battlefield, the trenches emptied out as the rest of the soldiers climbed out and met each other, offered each other Christmas greetings, began to pull out decks of cards, continued to sing, made a makeshift soccer ball with somebody's duffel tied together and had a soccer match in the middle of the battlefield. And at least, by the way, the film clip from the English grocery store chain ends. For the end of the afternoon, as evening was falling, off in a distance, the shells began to be launched and the noise of war began to intrude. And so this group of soldiers, historians suggest that it would have been somewhere around eight or 900 soldiers began to shake hands with each other and smile, wish each other Merry Christmas. One wrote later that if it was up to us, not a single bullet would have been ever fired again in World War I. 
but they went back to their sides and the war continued for another three and a half years. Once in the trenches, the English soldier James found slipped into his pocket a German cookie. And once back into the trenches, the German soldier Otto found a Belgian chocolate bar slipped into his duffel bag. In some ways, if you watch the clip, it's on the parish Facebook site this morning, like Holy Communion in a different form. And while they went back to fighting, those men on that battlefield, in that amazing Christmas truce a hundred years ago this week, I suspect they could never ever fight in the same way. They could never fight without the memory that at least for a handful of hours, in the midst of an otherwise horrible and ugly Christmas in Northern Europe, that at least for a few hours, they were brothers. They were family. And please God, that moment not only for them, all gone to their rest by this time, but for us, a hundred years later, in a world that has continued to be scarred and wounded by war, despite the fact that that was supposed to be the war to end all wars that this Christmas truce reminds us that at least for a few moments, we're family. We're brothers and sisters, all of us, no exceptions, because that's God's design. A holy human family, incredibly diverse, but also united on common ground in the image and likeness of the Creator, loved each one of us as beloved brothers and sisters. I think that's why these Christmas days which pass so quickly, which in some ways are only fleeting moments, serve such an important and an essential purpose for us. I think that's why, and this isn't one bit of a complaint, just a pastoral reality, why our churches fill up on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. Because we need so desperately those moments to be a part of our calendars. Those times when we remember who we are. We need those cookies and ornaments, those trees and greeting cards, those Christmas cocktails, even fruitcake, for God's sake, I suppose we need, if nothing else, to sort of knock it around like a soccer ball. We need those Christmas traditions to at least for a few moments, at least for a few hours, maybe just a couple of days, connect us again as brothers and sisters, as family, maybe not all of us by blood related, but more deeply related by nature and spirit and an amazing love that created us and sustains us all the way through. Perhaps without such moments for which we will travel across the country and around the world, perhaps without such moments by which we put ourselves in hock at least until April or May on the credit card bills, we would cease to exist and die of either loneliness or violence. And so the Feast of the Holy Family today holds up Jesus and Mary and Joseph, but holds up our own families too, as they are, the way our histories have unfolded. And we can see in the Scriptures today that family life is a complicated thing. A beautiful thing, but also a daunting thing. And I suspect there's no family here whose history has not been marked by conflict and difficulty 
by wounds that make World War I look like a tea party. But please God also, no family here that hasn't been able to enjoy a bit of Christmas truce, a bit of the reminder that no matter how much we fight or disagree, no matter who the varmint was that shot my paw, no matter who the cousin or brother or sister was that, that did me wrong, that we are bound together, that we are bound together in blood and water and spirit for earth and for heaven. St. Paul does a great job in that passage from the letter to the Corinthians, or Colossians to describe the complexities of human life. He implies them when he asks us to be patient with each other, huh? To bear with each other, to be quick to forgive each other, to love each other. And he gets into the nitty-gritty of it. I know his language in some ways rubs people the wrong way, but is it wrong for a wife to be submissive to her? Is it wrong for a wife to be respectful to her husband? Is it wrong for a husband to be respectful to his wife? Let's go back to the translation. Is it wrong for a husband and a wife to be submissive to each other? Is it wrong for a child, a little one or a teenager, to obey mommy and daddy as the acceptable way in the Lord? And it's okay, isn't it? I particularly love the last line. I love to watch kids when it gets sounded. Is it okay for dads and moms to be reminded not to nag their children and cause them to lose heart? It just re reflects the complexity of family life. And in the first reading from the book of Sirach, we use it at the funerals of elders here dozens of times every year. that we honor our fathers and mothers when they get older, that we take care of them as long as we live, as long as they live, that we don't begrudge them a long life, even when their mind fail or their physical health, that we would be kind and gentle to them. Those of us who are raising elderly parents know what an amazing privilege and a daunting challenge it is that tries our patience and tests our love and gives us the precious opportunity to give back to those who have given us so much. And not just living moments, but dying moments. Old Simeon in the Gospel, now you can let your servant die in peace. I don't need anything more, God, because you've kept your word. I've seen the Messiah. That's all I need. And so he's not afraid to be honest with Mary and Joseph, this child of yours. What an amazing gift. But also, what a source of contradiction. It'll break your heart at times, Mary, what you're going to have to watch him go through. But that's the way it is. Isn't that how our family lives are? Sometimes our hearts are broken at home. Many times we always hurt the ones we love the most or are hurt by them. But moments of peace, of truth, of joy sustain us and bring us back to the memory of who we are. Just like Christmas Mass or Sunday Mass sustains us or regular confession or a heart-to-heart -heart in spiritual direction, or the celebration of a wedding, or a baptism, or a confirmation, or a funeral, or an ordination. Only an hour or two of those moments, but they last forever in the peace they bring and renew in us as we make our way along. That brings us to Noah James Baldwin. He doesn't have a clue yet 
all that life holds for him. We trust it will be joy and success and health. We wonder what your personality will be, your skills and talents and gifts. We know that like every life, Noah James, there'll be a curious mixture of joy and sorrow, of life and death and hope and rebirth. That's already happened in your family story. You know how those amazing moments collide together sometimes. But we let this moment of his baptism in the Christmas season of 2014 have its impact on him, not so much now, but as his human life unfolds as a Christian and as his eternal destiny becomes manifest by the God who loved him and by the love of his mommy and daddy created him and bring him to birth. Be grateful today for this holy family, for this holy family, and for the holy family of our faith at Our Lady of Lourdes, and these moments that keep reminding us who we are, both now and forever, through Christ our Lord. And we bring him to the font of life as the assembly stands to profess our faith. So brothers and sisters, may I ask you, even though it may be tempting to do otherwise many times, do you reject Satan, all his evil works, all his slick and seductive, but always bogus and dead-end promises? Do you reject them all? Do. do you believe in God, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth and all they contain? who has made us male and female in the divine image and likeness, each one, and who loves us, each one, the way moms and dads love their children. Do you believe? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God and child of Mary, born humbly in a stable, growing in age and wisdom and grace, to be a wise teacher, a powerful healer, and a merciful friend? But for this loving way misunderstood, rejected and ridiculed, arrested and tortured, executed and buried in a borrowed grave. But because he was faithful to this loving way, raised up from the dead and alive forever in God's heavenly presence, do you believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit who keeps gathering us together as the Holy Catholic Church, one generation to the next, believing that all sins can be forgiven, trusting we are linked in spirit with all the saints who have gone on ahead, await awaiting the resurrection of the body and life in the eternal kingdom. Do you believe this? It is our faith, the faith of the church. We're proud to profess it. We're delighted to share it with this beautiful little guy. And we promise to live it in a way that will inspire him to live it too through Christ our Lord. So Nick and Bethany, is it your will that your son, Noah James, be baptized in this faith which we've just professed with you? And God, parents, do you promise to help them since they're new at this Christian parenting to raise their child to know Jesus in the life of our church? And people of God at Our Lady of Lourdes as his church family, do you promise to give him good example of our loving Jesus and serving him and living according to his way and his spirit. Do ya? That was close. Then the assembly can be seated and we can do the deed. Noah James Baldwin, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That went pretty well. You're not auditioning for the choir today, huh? That you might come to know Jesus and love him and follow where he leads. We anoint you with his Holy Spirit that even now makes you a priest 
prophet, and a member of the royal family of faith, the church. And we recognize in your beautiful white garment, worn by your mom at her baptism and your grandpa at his baptism, we recognize the outward sign of your Christian dignity, Noah, as a Christian person now by baptism. And with your folks and family and our church to help you preserve that dignity to a full share of eternal life. Okay, we're going to give you the Godmother here now. Let's say thanks. Don't anybody go away. Noah, receive the light of Christ. Let it enlighten your mind to know his gospel. Let it make your heart compassionate and warm and tender like the heart of Jesus. Let the gospel truth light your path through a long Christian life in this world. And one day, far, far, far off, when you must stand before death's moment and gate, may this light make you confident and unafraid. Let it lead you to heaven. And see Christ's light not only in a little candle, but in the words and deeds of mom and dad and godparents and the rest of us, who by the way we speak and act and love and share, hope to reveal that light of the Savior to you. And so another great moment in his family and in our family, Noah James Baldwin, a disciple of Jesus and a child of God, we welcome him aboard. Just like moms and dads take care of their children, so is God's love for us as we stand and offer our petitions in the name of our brother Jesus. <laughs> 